We're going to talk about module three and the programming assignment. Once you've installed Anaconda, that uh, gives you a Python console. So you need to type Anaconda to bring up a list of uh, apps that start with Anaconda. Looks like it's, oh, I misspelled it. So better a, a and A, that should start out. If you start type A and A, it should bring up um, this Anaconda Navigator. You'd like to run it as net, as administrator. This way, if you decide to change any files on your computer, you need to click yes so that Python can write and read files on your computer. And then once you've done all that, uh, you should be good to go. And that should launch up the Anaconda control panel. This is where you can launch all, all the different uh, apps that were installed. Many, Most of them are Python packages that were installed from PyP for you by the system called Anaconda. Um, Anaconda is pretty much the only way you can reliably get Python working on a, on a Windows machine. So that's why we're using it for this course. So you can then scroll down, you can see a lot of different tools, but there's really only one that you'll need to use for this course, um, maybe two. So um, you, have, you have several options for your IDE. We'll talk about that in later for your programming assignment. But for today, all you need to do is launch this Qt console um, uh, application. This will give you a terminal where you can run Python commands. It's a little hard to get to. It's it's the it's the third row down if you've got a three by a three wide um, presentation of the panels. You you can also search for it up here in these uh, text boxes. This will bring up your Qt console. Uh, this is a beautiful. Uh, uh, REPL, it's called R-E-P-L, it's an acronym. It means read, execute, uh, print, and loop, meaning go back to the beginning and do it all over again. This is what I do to quickly um, figure out uh, how I can build an application. So let's start with um, the homework assignment for uh, module one, uh, where one of the answers that was acceptable was to do a print print. Um, that uh, will print out information about that function called print. In IPython, there's a little shortcut for all of that. Um, you can just do the inner, you can run that inner statement. If you just run the, the print function without actually running the function, if you just um, it will print out any objects that you put on the screen. So if you could add a, had an X equals one, uh, that's not going to print anything out because there is no return value. But if, um, but if you have, if you then put X alone on a line, it decides, hey, you're probably, you didn't do anything with that variable. So you probably want to print it out. So it's going to print it out for you. So IPython is just trying to help you out um, while you're doing your development. Uh, it adds a little bit more uh, features that you don't get in um, the regular Python console. Okay, uh, next you can um, look at, uh, so we, you can do one of my favorite extras that you get. I think you get this also in a regular Python console too, but it's called the, it's the help function. And so you can print that out. Uh, you can do use the, the help function to print out information about the function print. Um, so this would be another way to do this. You could also do that, our weird recursive stuff. Everything's an object. So even that function help is an object. So you can get help about help and it'll tell you how to use it. Um, uh, so let's look at what, let's look at the, the easier one up here. It's a little less confusing. Let's talk about help about the print function and it tells you what it's what it's displaying here right at the first line the next line is the one that you're going to most often um, use in order to quickly understand something so you're going to see that it has the print function has a bunch of positional arguments that's what star args means uh, we'll talk about some and these other arguments are called keyword arguments and they have um, uh, default values so 
the separator if you decide to print multiple things with the function, if you have multiple args with commas between them, then you're going to, the separator between them is going to be a space. Unless, of course, you change that. You can change that by saying sep equals comma if you want your things to print out differently. Let's try that real quick. Print one comma two. This is the default behavior. Look, use a space to go between those two orders. Now, another neat trick is I hit the up arrow to go back to that command so I can edit it again and add another argument. Oops, let's fix my style. It's, it's good to separate your arguments with a space. Comma space is the uh, standard Python style when you're building code, especially when you're putting it in an IDE or text editor and sharing it with others. So let's, um, we could do the set space and that would do just what it did before, or we can change that. Let's put a comma or a pipe symbol. Let's try putting two characters in there. Let's, let's try to make it look like Python uh, syntax. Uh, Python um, style. There you go. If you put a comma and a space, then it will it will combine those two arguments with that as the separator. Okay, great. Let's move on to some even more interesting stuff. Um, another interesting feature. So that's one way to get help is with the help function. Uh, and that can give you a lot of information about any function you want or any function or object that you want to use. You can even use it on that X variable that we created. It tells you that it's an integer and uh, that it um, gives you a bunch of information about all the different methods you can use. Notice these weird methods that begin with double underscore. Those are really special ones. Uh, those are hidden from you. So you don't normally get to see them, but the help function gives you uh, more information. Uh, we'll learn about objects and hidden methods later in the course. But let's, uh, another interesting thing you can do is you can get that same help by using the question mark. So you can just say X question mark. And if you put X along, it's but if you put X question mark, it's going to give you information about that object, whatever it can find in the help text. This is called, these are called doc strings that it's displaying. Those actually exist in the source code. So let's look at some source code and how you can how you can look at the source code for particular packages. Let's look at the this package. It's a special Easter egg package. Uh, and as you can see, when you import it, it does some things. That's pretty rare. When you import something, it shouldn't normally print stuff out to the screen. But Tim Peters made this a special kind of module that does that. And he made it special in a lot of other ways. So let's look and see what he did. Um, uh, this is the Zen of Python. It, shows you, it tells you how to write good code in Python, particularly. What if you use two question marks? So you're getting... Uh, deeper help about an object. In this case, we're going to get help about a module, a module called this that we just imported. Let's look, so I hit enter on that, and now I can see the source code, the Python code that created that module. It gives you the path on your computer where to find it, and it gives you the um, uh, we could you could go to any text editor and go look at it directly if you wanted to. And it also displays it to the screen. But wait, this string doesn't look anything like that poem that it just displayed. Well, he's being clever here. He's doing the opposite of writing uh, readable code. He's trying to obfuscate code to make it really hard for you to understand how it works. But this up here is like uh, Tim Peters name has been translated with rot 13, uh, which is a, a, a clever, uh, easy cipher algorithm. That, um, and you can see the code for it here. It's just a substitution cipher where you just rotate all the letters by 13 characters. So the A becomes the 13th character in the alphabet and so on. And so this is the code that does. It's a dictionary that translates from the uh, the poems care from the from the rot thirteen encode, so it decodes it with this dictionary, and really interesting code about how he does it. Really short. Notice that the variable names are not at all understandable. He doesn't say 
uh, translation dict, or uh, it doesn't doesn't describe what the what the object does. He just puts gives it a single letter, and he uses them in. Uh, he did use the letter S for the string, and that's not too uncommon. It's not too unreadable because a lot of people do it. So, um, but he used uh, and D for dictionary. I guess that's not too unreadable either. And C for character. That's very common. Nonetheless, this is not all of that re all that readable as code. Um, he's doing a lot of things on short lines of code, like he puts an entire expression to one, where you could have put quite, uh, uh, an expression inside of this loop. Obviously, you, you weren't allowed to use um, uh, quotes, but let's do something else. Uh, let's put that on a line by itself. And I'm gonna show you something else about modules, something that you're learning this week. Um, in order to access the, the variables that are in that module, you need to use the module name first and then the, um, the dotted uh, value after it. Because we didn't in import the things that are inside that module, we imported the whole module together as one big object. And when you say import um, object or import module name, that is going to import the entire module as a single object. It's kind of like a zip file that pulls everything together. And to get to the contents, you need to use a dot to get inside. So I'm, oh, but this, this particular C, we're not going to use the C that's inside the package. We're going to use the C that's coming out from this for loop. This is a pattern you haven't seen before, so don't worry about it. It's called a list comprehension. It's a way to create a list on the fly right away uh, inside the print statement. So let's see if we get lucky and this works. Oh, we gotta, we gotta use the this.dictionary to do that get a method on, and this should work. Woohoo! So we've got a bunch of characters, it's printing them all out, but of course I didn't put, and you can say these in of Python, you can kind of see it in all the characters. All that's left is to join them together without any separation. And that's what that quote dot join did. Anyway, um, have fun with the um, QT console within Anaconda as you're doing any of your assignments and even your programming um, a, a midterm project where you're gonna be building a text adventure. This is the fastest way to write code. Uh, so we learned a couple of ways to get help uh, with the help function and the question mark. Also with the, uh, the double question mark to get the source code. And one last way to get help is to use the tab character. And you notice it lists, I hit tab after I hit the dot at the end of the module name, this, and then it brings up a list of all the possible variables. I can then type one of them and it hit enter and it will print out the value of that character. Uh, that's the last character in that for loop. Let's look at some of the other ones. Uh, D, that's the entire dictionary that translates. So when I started this episode, I said that it was gonna translate A to the 13th letter uh, after it. Well, it turns out that that's the letter N. Uh, and you can do it thing lowercase in as well that's a clever he used some clever things called modulo math in order to make that happen anyway uh, lots of fun lots of learning you can do by using the qt console in anaconda um uh should help you do your assignment and learn python